Okay, so let's uh, continue with this Ihara um, data function. Um, so this is a continuation uh, from last lecture. So we just started talking about these things in the last lecture. Now it's put on to. So let's record the call. So we had a graph D, which was. Uh, I mean, so we have your set of vertices and set of edges of the graph. And we always assume that the graph is finite. So number of vertices is less than infinite. Number of edges is also less than infinite. And uh, moreover, we also assumed that um, the graph has three conditions. Uh, it does have, it has no loops by loop I mean some edge going from one vertex to itself so this is no no uh, no multiple edges so this is also not okay and um, we also assume that there are no one valent uh, vertex, no one valent vertex. So there's no vertex with just one vertex. It's, uh, uh, I mean, one uh, edge coming to it and nothing going on. So this is also. Um, not acceptable. Okay, so these are three of these conditions. We are also assuming that the graph is connected. I mean, it's safe to assume that because everything decomposes and G is connected. Okay. Now, in this situation, uh, I'm not sure this is so important, this last step, but it's safe to assume. Uh, then in this situation, we define the uh, cycles. So what is a cycle? Uh, so, so, I mean, let, let me give you an example of such a graph. So let's look at, um, yeah, let's look at graph D equal to K4. So this is a, this is the complete graph on four vertices. Okay, so what is it? So this is uh, like that. So vertices, you can label them one, two, three, four. And uh, every vertex is connected to every other vertex. So this is, uh, we can also call it tetrahedron graph. So this is an example. Okay, so for such graphs, uh, we define cycles. So what is a cycle? A uh, cycle is a sequence of edges that comes back to the original point. So a sequence of edges um, like, so instead of giving formal definition, let me give you, the idea is clear, like one, two. So I'm just write, writing edge one, two, 
edge two two four, and then we have got edge four one. Start from here, you go there, there, there. Now we are assuming that there are no back backtracking without backtracking. So this is an important assumption. So without So in other words, you cannot just go like one, two, two, one, and then you stop. This is not allowed. This is this sort of redundancy is, is, is not acceptable. Okay, so these are the cycles. Very good. So we can construct a lot of cycles here, right? Just go on. And then uh, we had uh, also the notion of uh, primitive cycle. So primitive cycle, it's a cycle that's not a multiple of another one. So it's you just go once and then you go another time or three times, for example. So I just write it like this C is different from NC prime for any N different from one and for any C prime. So this is a cycle. So in other words, this is not one, two, four, one, one, two, four, one is not accepted. E.g. one, two, two, four, four, one, one, two, two, four, four, one is like twice. This one, two, two, four, for one, so this is not a cycle. Although it's a closed loop uh, geometric. What? And finally, we define the uh, primes. I mean, uh, so a prime. So this is the most important concept. Is an equivalence class of primitive cycles. Uh, an equivalence class of. Cycles. I mean, so equivalence class is with respect to this. For example, uh, of course, as you can see, uh, geometrically, one, two, two, four, four, one. This edge. We just say the class of this guy. I mean, the class of this guy. Declared to be the same as class of two four four one one two. If you start from another point and just go, you're not getting a new, uh, new uh, primitive cycle. So this is the same as class of two four four one one two. So it's really the geometry, the loop itself as a care of matters, the parameterization where you start, or V param doesn't count. Okay. Okay, so these primes are kind of most important concept for us. So let's uh, give it a name. So we just uh, call this set T, I mean, calligraphic P maybe or something, P set of all primes uh, in, G, in the graph G. It's a set of all primes. Maybe yeah. I just, I want to write it like P. Well, I don't know. I just write capital P, that's it. Set of all primes in G. So these are analogs of prime numbers for us. So these are geometrically prime numbers we want to see, or geodesics. So these are analogs of prime numbers in number theory uh, and 
I mean, so closed geodesics uh, geometrically that go once around, and uh, geodesics, prime geodesics, geometry, in Romanian geometry, in RM, right? In Romanian geometry. Um, okay, so this set is a very important set. Now, one thing we should know uh, that this set could be finite, could be infinite for a given graph. Typically it's infinite, but I, I gave examples that this could be finite. So P could be finite or infinite. This. You know, so I mean, here is a simple, like, simple, simple example uh, G equal to cyclograph So this is the graph that Okay, a graph like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, it has, um, yeah, it has seven vertices, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges. And it has only one prime here, right? So P is just, just this cycle like that. There's only one prime, just one prime. But uh, the example I just raised, uh, the set of primes is huge, is infinite. But uh, uh, for G equal to K4, uh, P is infinite. You can construct, I mean here, I mean, you can go once around and then come here. You can go twice around and then come here. You can go three times around and then come here. You just add this part uh, to it now, or just like that. And then uh, you, you notice that you, you can create easily infinite number of uh, primes here. So the set of primes here is infinite. And, um, it's a, I mean, to describe this set, in this case can be described, but it's a bit, uh, it's, it's a bit involved. So we have to, we have to be careful. Okay. So this is all from last time. Now, we also defined uh, Ihara zeta function. So let me recall the definition. So Ihara, this is really Ihara, it should be called Ihara set because um, zeta function. Of G. So Ihara had it in a special case for periodic um, uh, geometry periodic analysis in number theory, he introduced this. And then Sir noticed that this can be done actually for any graph. The underlying structure is, is a graph. That's nothing to do with, uh, I mean, yeah, it can be generalized like that. So that's, uh, so what is it? Uh, it's a function uh, zeta g of u is equal to product of one minus u to the power lp inverse over p. So what is lp? Is a uh, length of um, 
prime p, right? So, I mean, uh, a prime has a, has a canonical length. In this case, length is three, in this case. Number of uh, edges that comes into the definition of the prime is, is the length. So this is equal to number of edges in P. So that's the length of P. Uh, U, of course, is just a complex parameter. I mean, it's, it's, it's a variable. And remember, this is now, so you should compare, and of course, P is a set of primes. You should compare this with uh, Euler's uh, product uh, formula for zeta function, compare with Euler's uh, product formula. Euler's product formula. Zeta. I mean, for Riemann zeta function, right? So this was <clears throat> Euler showed that zeta s is equal to one minus p to the minus s minus one <laughs> over the set of all primes. Um, but uh, this is, of course, the original his original definition of Euler's original definition was this is one over n to the s. Right, and then he proved that this is equal. So, in this picture of graphs, we don't have access to this spectral kind of definition. Um, we cannot easily write it like this. Uh, but the, the product, infinite product formulation is, is available. Um, but then uh, there is this kind of sensitive, uh, I mean, it's very important to present it like this uh, for calculations and stuff, but anyhow, so that's uh, what we uh, do. So this is the, um, okay, so this is this, um, uh, in order zeta function, of course, I mean, uh, Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. Right. Now, this um, to, to get uh, so there, there, is, there is a very well known formula. So let me just briefly mention that formula and then we move on. Um, so we need the, also this concept of adjacency. Adjacency matrix of so this is A is a B matrix. So it's a matrix that's labeled by vertices of the graph, and basically A of B B prime is equal to one if the V is connected to V prime. If there's an edge connecting a V and V prime, right? So this means there exists an edge, one edge connecting V and V prime, and it's zero uh, otherwise. So this is this adjacency matrix. Um, so, this is a symmetric zero one matrix uh, with uh, just uh, with zeros on the diagonal with zeros on the main diagonal. So 
that's one thing we have to note. Okay, so uh, this is a, well, a very classical object of graph theory, right? Adjacency matrix. Now, um, this is closely related to Laplacian of the graph. So A is related to Laplacian. Because that's essentially what we are interested in. Um, related to Laplacian delta of G. So what is this Laplacian? Uh, the Laplacian is, is, is an operator that goes from functions of vertices to functions of vertices, right? So let me define it. Delta goes from functions on vertices to functions on vertices. So you can imagine your graph uh, is some sort of discrete space. And then you look at the space of functions on, on that space and this Laplacian is going, is turning a function into a new function. In, in what way? In, in the following, following way. So it's uh, delta <coughs> of f, given a function on vertices is going to be a new function on vertices. So that's equal to, its value on v is equal to, uh, so I can write here, I suppose, f of v, value function at that point, at that vertex, minus sum f of v prime, v prime is connected to um, v, and uh, yeah, divided by degree of v. So let me write it like this. This is equal to f of v minus this. Okay, so basically what is that? That's really, we look at uh, all, so this is vertex V, we look at all points that are connected to V. We average the value of function at these points. This is the averaging, we just, I mean, how many, I mean, just each, each edge now is getting same weight. So the total weight is degree of V and we subtract this. So this is a, this is a combinatorial Laplacian. And of course, this is totally more motivated from a uh, formula that we have for Laplacian. So, um, I mean, um, so, so for example, if Delta of F equal to zero, I mean, this is related to, so, um, so let me just make, make a remark that delta is uh, a combinatorial slash discrete analog of um, Laplacian on Rn. You see, um, uh, so there are different ways of thinking about it. Let me just give you one way. Uh, E.g., uh, we know that Laplacian of F is equal to zero in Rn. This is the story in Rn. If and only if F is continuous and uh, the value of F at each point is the average value on any sphere around that point. So the uh, value of F at X is equal to one over volume of uh, this ball, um, no, uh, sphere of radius, uh, sphere of radius R around X. Uh, so this is integral um, uh, F of Y 
dy over s r x. Okay, so what is that? This is the sphere. So think about it in R2, for example. This is x. I mean, we are saying that a function is uh, harmonic if and only if uh, it's continuous. And then the value of the function at each point is the average of its values on any sphere, on, on any sphere of any radius r positive around x. Uh, this you can prove, uh, okay, the easy direction is going from here to this direction. Uh, from here to there is a bit harder, but you can do it, right? So this direction, I believe you have to use Green's theorem, one of these classic theorems. Uh, this is uh, easy. Uh, this direction is a bit harder, but that's true, actually. This is a, and you see uh, here is uh, exactly similar. So if a function is in the kernel of this delta, it means that its value at each vertex is the average of its values around uh, around uh, of edges of their vertices around that vertex. So this is uh, this is one way. There are other ways as well. Um, um, there are other ways as well to to, to motivate this, but we don't want to talk about it right now. Too much. Okay, so. So using this, then uh, we can write this. Uh, you see that A is related to this delta. Now I can just say that if the graph is regular, G is regular. Regular means uh, degree of B is equal to D for any B in D. So each uh, vertex has the same degree. If the graph is regular, then in that case, uh, you can just say that Laplacian is equal to one minus, uh, yeah, that's easy, A over B. This is not difficult to show. Using uh, everything I said. Just uh, write both sides in the basis consisting of uh, vertices. I mean, consisting of delta functions of vertices. And then you can prove it. Uh, okay. So this adjacency is essentially, at least for regular graphs like that, it's really just a shifted and scaled version of uh, Laplacian. Okay, so that's good. Now, uh, the formula, I won't prove it because uh, there will be a talk about it uh, in presentations. So, um, so, but let me just mention this, uh, the, the thing that relates uh, Laplace kind of a spectral geometry to distribution of primes now. So in other words, a version of geometry. Um, okay, so let, let me let me just write it and then. So the, the, this is a result called uh, Ihara. So this is a term. Uh, it's due to so Ihara determinant formula. So this is due to actually uh, Bast and uh, Hashimoto and uh, I believe others also played a role. Well, Sarah defined this um, uh, in our Z function in general. I think that this formula that I'm going to write is due to Bast. Its proof is due to Bass. But the ori for original uh, zeta, zeta function, Ihara had this determinant form. So this guy got the idea from perhaps from the original, of course, from original paper. Okay, so what is this? Uh, the, the result is the following. Uh, it expresses uh, Ihara zeta function as determinant of an operator in terms of A. So let me write it. 
it says that zeta g u inverse. Remember, we inverted those Euler uh, factors in, in the definition of ER. So now we are inverting again, so we just get some infinite product. That's equal to the determinant of, oh no, there is a, there's, there's a factor of it. Yeah, one minus u squared uh, to the power r minus one times the determinant of one minus uh, u a plus u two q. So this is the um, this is a very basic fundamental formula. I think uh, this will be proved by Nathan. Uh, that's part of this presentation. Uh, so, but let me explain this at least so that you are ready for his presentation. So, what is R? R is the rank of the uh, fundamental group of the graph. R is rank of I one of G, which uh, I will just prove it that this is a free group on the R generator. So this is free group on R generators. So we know exactly the fundamental groups of graphs. Phi one of graphs is F R. I will I will explain this. Actually, I will prove it. Um, now, what is Q? Q the matrix Q I J. Same matrix as size, same size as A. Uh, in the following form, so. Uh, so q i j is equal to zero if i is different from j. So so it's a diagonal matrix. In other words, it's just a diagonal matrix. And q i i is equal to q i. So what is q i now? Q i. Um, yeah, the degree of this vertex that we also dealt with before, the degree of the i equal to qi plus one. So this is basically equal to degree of the i minus one. If you want. So this is a diagonal uh, matrix uh, on the diagonal, degree minus one of uh, all vertices are. Put there and okay, so this is a n by n matrix where n is the size of the matrix, and we just take this determinant like this. And um, so, if you look at it now, the amazing thing follows that actually this Ihara zeta function is one over some polynomial. That's it. So, I mean, the quick corollary is that, of course, a zeta. That we have no idea what uh, shape and form is going to be is equal to one over some uh, some polynomial, right? Uh, some uh, polynomial in in, in U, where f is a polynomial. Only polynomial. Right. So. It's, it's a very, very, I mean, now uh, precise in, in a way information about zeta. Because before I said that uh, we didn't know even uh, what is the radius of convergence of that infinite product. It could have been that that infinite product is actually uh, divergent. But now we know that the radius of convergence is the absolute value of the smallest zero of this polynomial. And we know the location of poles. And uh, some information is available by, by looking at this completely combinatorial. So this definition relates 
uh, essentially relates distribution of primes to spectrum of the graph. So this is a relation in a way between uh, geometry and quantum mechanics, essentially. Geometry, I mean, but geometry in this case, we really mean these primes. Primes or geodesics or, um, yeah, is related to a spectrum of Laplace. Because that determinant, we can express it in terms of the spectrum, the spectrum of uh, anyway. So this is the uh, this is one of those things that uh, I said we we would love to know it in, in more general context, even you know, like for manifolds, uh, analogs of these things for manifolds and uh, things like that. Are there any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Uh, you you said that 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 a determinant uh, can be expressed in terms of the spectrum of the Laplacian, but I mean the 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 well, if if G is regular, then uh, the Laplacian is equal to identity minus A over D. But the 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 uh the presence of U like uh, just gives a different weight to each of the factors, so it doesn't add up to the Laplacian anymore, right? Um, no, it doesn't add up to the Laplacian. Yeah, I mean, uh, the best result, that's right, is for regular, for regular graphs. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in, indeed, uh, the best results are for, for regular graphs, right? But, um, I mean, it's something about Laplacian, some, so the, 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 the thing is, I mean, if, if I know, uh, you, you see, this is, um, yeah, I mean, this Q, of course, if, if the graph is not regular, this matrix Q uh, is not a multiple of identity, so it does not commute, and then I cannot diagonalize A and Q in the same basis, yeah. Uh, but if the graph is regular, information is perfect. Everything is in terms of a spectrum. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Right, so if, if the graph is not regular, it's more subtle. But uh, in this case, uh, but, but by the way, best results are really for regular graphs, as I will, I will explain now. So that's, uh, yeah, okay. So that was, a, that was a good point, yeah. Um, okay, any other questions? Is there any determinant formula for irregular graphs or certain types of irregular graphs? Uh, this formula actually, is uh, for uh, general non non regular. Oh, this is just all. Oh, oh, okay, I see. <laughs> right. So this is for uh, general non regular graphs. There is a similar formula for directed graphs. You see, I did not assume any orientation. I did not orient edges. If you orient edges, there is a parallel story you can develop, and the formula in that case is actually even easier, I believe. It's just determinant of one minus UA, uh, that's all. So I would say uh, for oriented um, or directed, uh, I think graph theory also is called directed, for directed or oriented graphs, actually the graph does not, does not have to be regular. It's directly in terms of a spectrum, directly. Oh, okay. that's, uh, that's, that's even more precise information. I think the difficulty with this uh, cue is that uh, uh, we are not assuming our graph is uh, uh, our graph is directed, so we have to define. Add a direction. Okay. That's uh, yeah. So that's that's one thing. Okay. Yeah. So uh, as I said, Nathan is going to um, give a proof of the result and uh, some of the things I will say. But I mean, I, I'm just preparing the ground for the thing, but let me just do something about, I mean, let me prove this because that's a kind of nice result and it's kind of relates to uh, what I'm going to do with the uh, cell break trace points. Okay, so pi one of graphs, let me 
I will give an example soon, but let me just look at fundamental proof. So I mean, let's assume G is equal to say K4, which is this graph, right? Of course, I mean, this is a topological space, right? I mean, I mean, we are, we, are, we are assuming that these two things don't intersect, of course, over each other. I mean, they, they, so, so this is a topological space. So it has a pi one. So, so I don't have to define it. I mean, it's defined already. Pi one of G is already defined. But the question is, uh, what is it? Uh, so, uh, so the idea is, uh, let's uh, define a tree. It's a very important notion in graph theory and physics. A tree is a connected, simply connected graph. A connected and simply connected. I mean, the tree could be finite or infinite. Uh, that's fine. Uh, finite or infinite is okay. Okay, so it could be finite or infinite. Um, okay, so of course, or you can just uh, start at this point and then uh, go. In four directions at each vertex, we have four choices. Go. And uh, there are beautiful pictures of trees if you look at uh, Wikipedia, and somehow they approach to a boundary, boundary circle for this tree. Um, but that's okay. These are these are this is a finite tree and this is an infinite tree. Both are very very important. Okay. So why we need trees? Uh, we need the trees uh, because uh, because of uh, for example a spanning tree. So a spanning tree. Of. Uh, G, what is it? It's a tree, it's a, it's a subgraph of G, which is a tree and contains all vertices. It's a natural concept. So a subgraph of G, which is a tree, it should be a tree. And um, and uh, contains all vertices. Okay, let me just put it like this: containing all vertices. I mean, uh, for example, for this one. I mean, uh, trees here could be this, for example. This is a tree. We can have this is a tree. I mean, spanning tree. Or you could have this is a spanning tree. Or you can have um, this is a spanning tree, etc. I mean, you can have all sorts of things like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a beautiful formula due to uh, uh, Kirchhoff that uh, counts uh, this is Kirchhoff's uh, theorem. Uh, so this, uh, so this is called matrix tree theorem. This is the famous matrix tree theorem. 
gives uh, the number of spanning trees in the graph in terms of uh, this uh, Laplacian matrix. Gives the um, number of spanning trees. This, this is not what we need, but I'm just saying spanning trees uh, in terms of delta. This is a beautiful, beautiful theorem of um, the spectral graph theory, which is called matrix tree theorem. Uh, but we don't need it. But anyhow, the, the thing that we need is that any uh, graph has a spanning tree. That's what uh, we should bear in mind. So this is our lemma. Any graph, I mean connected, of course, as, as this, uh, has a spanning tree. I mean, it's proof, uh, you can prove it by induction on number of vertices. Induction on uh, number of vertices. I mean, if you prove it for graphs with number of vertices uh, n, already uh, prove it like that, you can just uh, pick a point, and then because the graph is connected, this is coming to a vertex, then you just cut. You just cut this edge and this point from your graph. You just cut it. And um, if, it could, if it goes to other vertices also, you cut all those as well. So that you have now reduced to a case of a graph that has um, one vertex less, at least one vertex. No, I mean, it has one vertex less. Yeah, exactly. And then you just continue the induction. So this always exists. Okay, so what it has to do with uh, pi one of G and the fact that this is a free group. Now, take uh, a, a spanning tree. So this is, I just said it, but uh, so. Is the result still true for infinite graphs? Uh, this result, I... Okay, so for infinite graphs, I, I cannot claim it because uh, I don't know what's gonna happen with my induction in that case. <laughs> you should check it and let me know, uh, Jeremy. Why don't you do that? Sure thing. That's a very good... Uh, well, I, I cannot say yes right now. Yeah. Okay, very good. So um, now, so pick uh, a tree inside your graph. Then uh, from here, then, then you construct uh, a, a, a new object, G hat. A topological space topology hat, which is G mod T. So what is this? Uh, this it means the topological space by by collapsing uh, the tree T to a point. So this is the topological space obtained. by collapsing E to a point. I mean, let's look at this case, for example, see what they have in mind. So we have got this, right? So let's uh, pick, uh, okay, so we have this as well. So let's pick a, uh, a tree here. So uh, the tree that I'm going to pick is this one. Okay, so this is my tree. And uh, these are uh, the things uh, that, uh, so I'm going to kind of make it bold. 
And then I have uh, how many uh, steel edges uh, left is that and that. Okay. So what happens if you collapse all these points in the tree to one point? If you collapse all of them to one point, this whole thing gives you one point. And then of remaining, there, there are uh, how many uh, edges remain? One, two, three. Each of those remaining edges will give you a loop because they connect back to that point again. So this is one loop, two loops, three loops. So you get the bouquet of three loops. Okay, of three. Okay, so this is basically, um, this is, uh, in this case, it's G mod T. Now, because this T is a tree, it's uh, simply connected. So um, it's pi one, in particular, is zero. There's no one, there's no loops in T. No. It follows, uh, I mean, uh, from general uh, pi one theory, uh, fundamental group theory, fundamental group theory. Uh, applied to this kind of G to G mod T. I mean, I'm not saying this is a vibration or anything. I'm just saying this is there's a quotient map. This quotient map, right? Like that. This is G hat. Uh, implies that actually pi one of G is really pi one of this collapsed space. Uh, in fact, uh, this space is a deformation retract of this space. It's pi one of G hat of G bar. Okay, for bouquet of um, R vertices, R R uh, loops, we know that uh, again fundamental group theory. Know that this is a free group on R generator. Okay, so let me just write it. So for uh, this one, okay, uh, all loops by one. Of uh, G mod T is, is equal to um, FR. So this is free group on R generators. R generators. So what is this uh, free group on R generators? So we have got A1, A2, AR. And basically what you do, you just form all possible words in A's and their powers, positive or negative. So this is the set of all, uh, I mean, this is, so FR is the set of all words in A1, including empty word that will give you the identity of the group, A1, A1. One. Yeah, so one word, for example, could be a one and one, a two and two, etc. I mean, it's a, it's an infinite group. It's 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 a free group. It's it's a very interesting, very complicated actually group. Um, so this is the so you can use uh, I believe Van Kampen theorem. To prove that this is the case. Yes, one can. Why is that? Uh, why is this result? Yeah, so this is uh, you learn in algebraic uh, topology undergraduate or 
project. Okay, so now this is pretty good. One thing I want to, uh, and this is what uh, what appears in the definition of uh, in, in, what appears in the horizontal function. Now, one thing I want to emphasize is that from here we can actually construct universal covering the space of this uh, this thing, which is a very nice uh, interpretation. So let me write it. Universal covering space of um, this uh, bouquet. So let's uh, to be to be specific. Let's make it like uh, with um, three, for example, like like in this case. So this uh, book is, is a tree. So we have, uh, so this this case we have got uh, this tree now. The tree is like this. Um, at each point we have got three edges going out. Three edges. And then three edges here. Okay. So you keep going. So, uh, yeah. And in some sense, actually, so this is an infinite graph. Uh, this is a tree, and it's a tree valent. Uh, three. And you can construct a covering map from here to there by a projection, a covering map. So this would be your covering map. And the covering map is, uh, well, you send this point to that point. And this thing, you close it on one loop. This one, you close it on another. And then when you go here, then again, you close. So you kind of uh, cover this bouquet of three loops infinitely many times by this, by this scheme. So this is a beautiful, beautiful, um, I mean, beginning of, so I should say, it's a beginning of a beautiful story. It's like in Casablanca. <laughs> this is the beginning of a useful story, something like that. <laughs> I don't remember. So anyhow, so we've got now uh, this, and uh, okay, so yeah, but I don't need it right now. I just uh, okay. So by the way, of course, now this R, we have a nice formula for R in terms of Euler characteristic, right? So let me just uh, tell you. Of Euler characteristic of a graph. Uh, so the Euler characteristic of a graph uh, chi, I just wouldn't use the word chi g is equal to number of vertices minus number of edges. There are no two faces. Graph is a one-dimensional manifold. Right? So, so, logical manifold. Well, it's not really a manifold. I mean, it's a one-dimensional object. So this is this one. And what is the relation between... Um, so, what is it? I mean, number of so R is equal to number of edges in the graph minus number of edges of the tree, right? Minus number of edges of this tree. But what is number of edges of the tree? The number of edges, because it's a tree, number of its edges is equal to number of vertices of the tree minus one, right? 
So that's equal to the number of edges of the graph minus number of vertices of the tree uh, minus one. But this um, it, a spanning tree, I mean, the spanning tree has the same number of vertices as the, the, the graph itself. So that's equal to number of edges minus number of vertices plus one. But this is Euler characteristic, right? So this is Euler characteristic of G plus one. So yeah, okay, so we can say that R is equal to um, Euler characteristic G plus one. So here we have to put uh, the power here is really Euler characteristic. So it has a topological significance, this part. I mean, this part is always is there, irrespective of what A you have, it's always there. Um, okay. So I guess we discussed uh, both sides of this formula in, uh, in a bit of detail, but of course there is so much to say still. But let me give you an example now so that uh, any questions? Or? Uh, not a question, but I did look that up and you can prove it using Zorn's lemma by taking the set of all trees and then the union of trees is your maximal element. Oh, okay. So yeah, you have to Zornify. Okay. It's a proof by Zornification. Yeah. Okay, very good. Excellent. So now, um, what we want to say is just give, give one example and uh, move on because uh, yeah so uh, example let's go back to our, our, our favorite example which today seems to be g equal to k4 now i don't know it's this one In this case, um, you can compute uh, A and Q are easy to compute. And uh, they give you, um, so you can just, uh, this is um, Formula is really like this. Okay, so uh, so this is in from Terrace. Uh, the formula is zeta uh, g of u. Is that the other zeta function in this case? Of course, there is this factor one over one minus u two. Well, I mean, we saw that for k four graph r is three, so this is two. This is always there times uh, one minus u, one minus two u times, uh, uh, there's a quadratic term squared, one plus u plus two u squared to power three actually. Yeah, that's the close term. Um, okay, right. So that's that. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the poles of uh, zeta, of course, are at roots of this polynomial, poles of zeta. Are just points of plus minus one one half and the two complex roots of this guy which is minus one plus uh, root minus half oh. uh, so okay so um this guy so its absolute value is uh, one over root two. The complex root um, 
it's one over root two, right? Which is point zero point I believe seven or seven. Okay, so the radius of so now in general radius of convergence is very important. So we are radius of convergence. Um, is it a G U in general? This is a this is a number that is called R G. That's the uh, absolute value of the smallest uh, hole. Smallest absolute value of the pole. Okay, so this, in, in the case of uh, Ihara, we know that it is um, that's what we calculated over there, right? Um, Yeah, it's it's going to be one half. Yeah, it's just one half. Okay, now uh, using this um, this concept of RG, uh, you can define Ramanujan graphs. Okay, first of all, so this is what I, I'm not going to say anything. You just prepare the ground for what I don't want to do. So first of all. This uh, Ihara determinant formula uh, gives a formula which, which is called the um, um, graph prime number theorem or graph prime theorem. So uh, what is this uh, graph prime theorem? So we just define that pi of uh, say n be equal to number of uh, primes p belonging to um, p primes in the graph such that its length is equal to n. In this case, we just say length is equal to n. And uh, this uh, gives us a formula, a symptotic formula for pi n. Get uh, formula So this is this is exactly like well, I mean, it's not quite exactly because we just cut it at n, not we don't consider. So this you should compare it with prime number theorem, right? So pi x was asymptotic to x over log x. So there is, a, I mean, the reason uh, this uh, people could prove this was uh, um, functional equation, uh, analytic continuation of zeta, uh, and the fact that there are no zeros on the line real part of s equal to one. I, I mentioned. Uh, in this case, it's easier than that even uh, because these are just polynomials, so it's easy. But this I won't say. Anything. Um, another thing also is that Riemann hypothesis is true for graphs, uh, for regular graphs. I believe re regular Ramanujan graphs. So let me write it, and then uh, and then we will have. Uh, I think uh, so. Um, so plus Riemann hypothesis. Holds for Ramanujan graphs. So this is Ramanujan graphs. Actually, I believe um, it's uh, even if and only the graph is Ramanujan, if and only. The uh, Riemann hypothesis holds in the sense that 
the um, zeros of zeta are located on, along, along some critical line. So this uh, I won't say anymore. So this is a very important class of graphs. Uh, I mean, Ramanujan graphs, people in computer science, in network theory, in a lot of areas, mathematics, they are very, very interested in this. So where Ramanujan graphs means really are G should be equal to one over Q, where graph is, first of all, it should be regular. Graph is Q plus one regular. So in this case, so this is Ramanujan graph. Uh, in this case, uh, for G equal to K4, our graph was, is three regular. Well, three regular, as you can see, and uh, using uh, Ihara, Ihara Zeta, I mean, determinant formula, we know that half is the uh, RG, and RG equal to one over Q, which is one over two uh, by determinant formula. There's a circle of ideas relating regular graphs and uh, among regular graphs, Ramanujan graphs to Freeman hypothesis and uh, prime number two. So that's uh, so that's one uh, kind of installment of the idea of uh, idea of. Uh, Relating uh, primes, geodesics, prime numbers, primes in, in any sense that you can imagine, to the spectrum of uh, Laplacian uh, uh, through these explicit formulas. So that's uh, one thing we want to do. So that's, um, yeah, that's the graph theory incarnation of these ideas. Now, what I was going to say is, uh, I believe, uh, yes, yeah, so, so the picture that is emerging is that the graph is really like a Riemann surface in some sense. It, it is an analogy, a strong analogy between graphs and Riemann surfaces. So we will uh, we'll see that. And this determinant formula is, is a graph analog of cell break trace formula in some sense. So, so my uh, next task is to get into cell break trace formula then. But I think I should stop now because uh, it, it's a good point to have some discussions, uh, some questions and stuff like that. So I just stop now.